Hello students, welcome back to our online uh, virtual classroom. This is a crime scene photography video lecture series. This week we're going to be talking about uh, lenses and how using different lenses can actually affect your images. So let's go ahead and get started. Lenses are designated by their focal length, and here's the definition that I'd like you guys to know. Okay, focal length is the distance in millimeters. Okay, that's the little mm sign between the optical center of the lens and the sensor when the camera is focused on infinity. So when we say focused on infinity, um, that's when the lens is basically at its shortest. Okay, the actual length of the lens is going to change as its focus changes. So you'll see on the image on the left, this is from your textbook, um, in figure 4.48, it shows you a 50 millimeter lens and you see the little, um, it looks like a sideways 8, okay, that's the infinity sign. Okay, this lens is focused on infinity and that is basically the shortest setting uh, for that lens. So if you measured that, it would be 50 millimeters. Now, this is the same lens on the right in figure 4.49, which is also from your textbook, but it's focused for closer detail, so it's a little bit, quote unquote, zoomed in, okay? It's just focused at a closer setting than infinity, and you'll see the lens itself has actually gained a little bit of height there. It's a little bit taller, okay? So if you're talking about a focal length of the lens, this image, both of these images show the same lens, and those are 50 millimeter lenses. Um, but we're, we designate the focal length based on when the lens is focused on infinity. Here's some more lens terminology for you, okay? Fast versus slow. Well, what does that mean? Well, photographers often refer to lenses as either being fast or slow. And this refers to their maximum or largest aperture setting for that lens. So here's an example. Say you're shopping for a 50 millimeter lens. That's the lens you want, and you look at two different options. And one has a maximum aperture of f4, which is a large aperture, right? It's a large opening in that lens. Um, from you know past lectures, we know that. Okay, so then you look at the other lens, and it has a maximum aperture of 2. And we know from past lectures that f2 is a bigger hole than f4, right? So the lens that has an aperture setting of f2 has a larger aperture, and that's going to let in more light and allow for the use of faster or shorter shutter speeds, right? And the lens that we were also looking at, the f4, that's not as big of an aperture, right? So that lens would technically be considered slower than the f2 lens. So f2 is the f-stop that photographers look at when deciding if a lens is fast or slow. So lenses that have apertures that are larger than f2, like f1.8 or 1.4, um, are considered fast. And lenses with apertures that are smaller than f2, like f4, f5.6, and so on, are considered slow. If you guys get into photography and um, you end up doing photography out of a hobby, uh, you'll notice that fast lenses for your cameras are more expensive. And um, the reason for that is that um, fast lenses are kind of coveted by uh, photographers. That's because they can use them in low light situations without flash, right? Because they have wide holes in their lenses and they can let in a lot of light. So that's why they're considered um, a little more expensive and uh, quote unquote better lenses to use um, for artistic photographers. So that's just a little piece of trivia for you. Okay, here's some more terminology for you. The normal lens. 
Okay, different lenses may make your scene look different than it would if you were looking at the scene just with your regular old human eye, if you were on the scene looking at the world around you. Okay, normal lenses are the lenses that make the scene look the way it would if you were looking at the scene in person. Okay, that's the normal lens. A 50 millimeter lens is considered the normal lens for a 35 millimeter SLR film camera. So there are a lot of different things that uh, there's a, there are a lot of different factors that go into determining the normal lens for your camera and it has to do um, with the diameter of the film plane and different things like that. Um, but I'm not really asking you guys to get that deep into this. Um, you want to check your camera manual and it will usually tell you what the normal lens setting is for your camera. So just have a look at that. But 50 is considered the normal lens for 35 millimeter SLR film cameras. And that's kind of the, uh, the starting point for discussing lenses. So 50 is considered the normal lens. Telephoto lenses, on the other hand, are longer than 50 millimeters, okay? And using these lenses, they're going to have a couple different effects on your image. The first one is there's going to be a magnification. Things are going to look bigger in images that are taken with a telephoto lens than ones that were taken with a normal lens. They're also going to have a narrower field of view, so you're going to see less of the scene. They're going to compress the foreground to background distance, and I'm going to show you guys an example of that in the next few slides. And they're also going to have a narrower or shallower or poorer <laughs> depth of field range, okay? So let's look at some examples. In the picture beforehand, the skull is just in that little center section of your screen. And then, here we go, it's definitely magnified. You can see more of it. You can see more details, and it's bigger in your image. Is there a narrower field of view? Yeah, absolutely, right? We can't see the foreground in front of the ledge anymore. We can't even really tell if that's a pillar in the background or not. We know it is from the image before, but we definitely can't see any of the little parking spaces um, that we thought we could see uh, in, the, in the last picture. So there's definitely less of the scene being shown to you in this image than in the previous image. Compression of foreground to background distance. That's true. Um, if you're looking at the area in front of the skull and we know that there is a pillar behind it, they look closer together almost. It's almost impossible to tell how much distance is actually behind the ledge uh, in between the pillar and the skull itself. So it's, compress it, it's compressed. It looks shorter. Okay. Narrow depth of field. Absolutely. <laughs> we can't even really tell what's behind the skull anymore, right? We can see the skull, we can see the ledge, well we can't see the foreground anymore because that has been taken out because we have a narrower field of view. But there's definitely, definitely less of the image that is in focus than the uh, image prior. Okay, so on the other side of the spectrum here, we've got wide-angle lenses. Now, wide-angle lenses are lenses that have a focal length of less than 50 millimeters. And using these lenses will have um, a couple different effects on your image as well. And you might guess they're the opposite. <laughs> they're the opposite of what telephoto lenses do to your image, right? First of all, you're going to have a wider field of view. So you're going to be able to see more of the scene. There's going to be an elongation of foreground to background distances, and you're going to get an increase in DOF, or depth of field. So let's take a look back at our little ceramic skull example. So remember that this image was taken with a normal lens. We're 10 feet away from the skull, and we're back to being able to see some of the foreground, a little bit in the background, um, pretty good depth of field, and let's see what happens when we switch to a wide-angle lens. Okay. So this image was taken from the same distance, but I used a wide-angle lens, 17 millimeters, okay? Let's look at the changes that were made. Is there a wider field of view? Absolutely, right? In the foreground, we can see that there are those yellow um, no parking area signs uh, or um, uh, markings on the foreground. We can see that there are two other um vertical signs next to the pillar behind the skull, right? We didn't see those before. And we can see cars in the background. We can see the lighting in the parking structure. There's even an exit door over to the right. So there's definitely a wider field of view 
when you are um, using a wide angle lens. Elongation of the foreground to the background distances. Yeah, absolutely. Remember in the image before, we couldn't really see any of the foreground, and we couldn't tell if there was a space behind um, the skull, really, in between the pillars. You can definitely tell that here. It looks like we're standing farther back, but we're not. We're just using a wide-angle lens, and that's creating a longer-looking distance between the foreground and the background of the image. And increased depth of field, oh yeah, everything um, behind the skull is definitely looking sharper and more in focus, uh, just like the foreground. You can actually see the striations on the concrete there in front of the skull. So we definitely have more of the image that's in focus than the image prior. So changing your lens can have an effect on several different elements within your photographs, such as depth of field, what we just looked at. So what other considerations do you need to have in mind when you're picking your lens? Well, it turns out that your shutter speed selection is also tied into your lens selection. Okay, and let's look at that. Last week, I told you that using a shutter speed of 60, or 1 60th of a second, was usually the speed that was required to freeze the motion of hand holding a camera, right? Even if you have a really steady hand, if you're not using flash and you're using this type of shutter speed, if you use anything longer than 1 60, just the beat of your heart, right, can actually shake that camera. So that's true if you're using a normal lens. A normal lens, um, about 50 millimeters, okay? If you use a 60 shutter speed, that's going to freeze the motion of your uh, hand shake or your body shake. Now, if you use a telephoto lens, you're going to need a faster shutter speed to free the, freeze the photographer's uh, hand holding motion, okay? If you use a wider angle lens, you guessed it, you can get away with using a slower s shutter speed. So you can get a rough estimation of the shutter speed that you're going to need by looking at the focal length of the lens, okay? If you're using a 200 millimeter lens, you're likely going to need around a 200 or 200th of a second shutter speed to freeze the photographer motion. And the, rever the, re the other side is also true. As your lens gets shorter, you can usually get away with using um, a longer shutter speed. Um, there are some uh, mathematical <laughs> situations that go on with the equations um, when it comes to wide-angle lenses, but don't worry about that so much right now. Um, most of the time, you just have to be concerned that you're going to need a faster shutter speed if you're going to be using a longer lens or a telephoto lens.